Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew, welcome, glad you're here. On this channel, we like to talk about simple crypto passive income strategies that are implemented on blockchains with utility, use cases, and that solve business problems. If you like that type of content, subscribe here or follow me right over here at DeFi Divi on Twitter. As always, none of this is investment advice. I'm not an investment advisor. Please do your own research outside this channel. Okay, let's get into it. Today, we're going to talk about two topics. We are going to go over the Songbird Rich List update for the month. And then after that, we are going to go over how to handle market malaise, how to, how to uh, be optimistic, not just about crypto, but about life in a flat market, in a down market, and how to crush it and kick ass and be really stoked about what's coming your way. I'll elaborate on all that more in a minute, but first let's get into this rich list update. Here is me quoting myself, and I quote Songbird Alert, the rich list has grown by 5,385 new accounts since April 15th, a slow month for the flock, but the nest builders are flapping ahead. Happy to hold this sleeping giant, it's just stretching its wings. And yeah, that's because of this right here. The nest builders are flapping ahead, even though we had a slow month in account growth and the price has been flat and kind of boring. The builders are building, and that's the most important thing to me in the long term, which I'm holding this one for. The builders are building, and that's all that matters. I see a lot of people building on Flare.Builders. I see a lot of you know, people coming on Twitter. I go in the developer court Discord on, of Flare and I see developers asking questions. This is good news to me. I, so I'm not concerned. I probably will buy some more. I might pick up a little more maybe this week or next, actually. Mm, I, just, I just thought of that, believe it or not. But now that I'm making this video, I'm like, oh, I probably should pick up some more. Songbird, I already have a nice bag of that, but wouldn't hurt. Wouldn't hurt to buy more for me, for me. Um, please do your own research on that. So uh, this update was, yeah, it probably, even by, I can tell by the level of engagement I got on this Twitter post, people weren't as excited about it. Usually I get a lot more comments and likes. It's still a good amount, but not the usual for a rich list post. Um, I like this comment by GruDev, another developer. Give that account a fellow. I believe he does mobile stuff. Uh, and I quote, the time will come. And look at that cute little songbird there. Getting ready to flap his wings. Love that, which is what I wrote here. And then this other comment by cat analyst on Twitter, 11 more songbird millionaires added. Now, how can you tell there's 11 more songbird millionaires added? You simply click right here on this hashtag and you will see the, um, the previous rich lists that were posted. Unfortunately, Twitter doesn't post them in exact order, which they would, but you would look at the one I just posted, which was middle of May, and you could go, go to a top tier swordfish and see that in the middle of May, this one I just posted, there were 610 swordfish, meaning 610 people had between 1 million and 5 million songbird. Pretty cool, 610. And then you'd scroll to April, the middle of April, which is April 14th, and you'd see there were 511 swordfish. So yeah, there's 11 more. So there's 11 more songbird multimillionaires that have grown this month. Pretty cool. You know, not stellar crazy growth, but that's okay. I'm still happy about it. And I am looking forward to doing the flare one coming out uh, June 1st, especially after this most recent flare drop. So look for that coming. Let's get into the second part, how to handle market malaise. There are two, two methods I do, I, I, that come to mind right now. First, what makes me qualified to say how to handle market malaise? Well, I mean, I'm an XRP holder. I bought XRP. I really started going in heavy a couple of years before the, the uh, SEC lawsuit was dropped in 2020. So maybe about a year and a half, two years before that. And it was already kind of a sucky year, but I started buying anyways, sucky couple of years up to that. But then that hit, and then there was another long period of flatline boring, and we kind of missed out on a lot of the bull run. I mean, when I saw my portfolio in terms of XRP do really well for a minute, but it never broke all-time highs. It was fun seeing it go up that high, but the point is, I have a lot of, I, I was actually happy during that period. I didn't sell one XRP during the, when the lawsuit first dropped. I wasn't worried about it. 
And there are two things that contributed to that. And I was very optimistic no matter what. And two things that contributed to that are, we'll talk about the first one, which I think is okay. I give it a, on a scale of one to 10, maybe a five. And the second one, I give a, an 11 out of 10. So the first one is diversification, all right? It's a great, obviously, we've all heard diversify. And when the XRP lawsuit hit, that's when I started diversifying. At that point, I was finally, maybe I took advantage of that last dip right in December when it hit, just uh, the last CC lawsuit hit, I think I bought maybe that one last time then. And then I was happy with my bags. I'm like, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna buy it now. I'm just gonna completely diversify. And diversification is pretty good. It gives you peace of mind, and especially when you're in a down market and you can dollar cost average down. On a downtrend, you can really lower your cost per token. And so I've gotten some other great projects, you know, which I talk about on this channel, Hedera. And I, I don't talk about Gala as much because I just, I just don't talk about it as much, but lots of others. Uh, I just too many to name right now. I'd have to pull up my portfolio. But diversify, diversification is, is a great, it's one great way to have a level of sanity. But that said, the crypto market kind of rhymes, right? So if it's one, if, if, if Bitcoin's crashing, and then the blue chips are crashing. It's all going down anyway. So diversification into other assets. Yeah, stocks, bonds, real estates. You probably already know this anyway. I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't know. But so that's why I only give this one a five. But it is helpful. You want to you diversify. Some people are all in only on Songbird and Flare. And um, I don't do that. If you do it, hats off to you. It could pay off big. It could pay off huge. Um, and it could all go to zero. That's why I like to diversify. We don't know. It's early days. Let's talk about the second one now. The second one is a Grand Slam home run. And I know this because this is what kept me sane, happy, and optimistic about money, especially during the last, during the last uh, well, bear and bull market as an XRP holder when just things weren't happening. And that is building. And I don't mean you have to be a developer. I don't, I don't mean you have to be, you know, a... a blockchain creator or a smart contract developer. I just mean building something that gives you a sense of purpose and that, yeah, ideally can be turned into a business. There's something here that happens not only when you get to a point where what you've built has enough value that people are like, I got to have it here. Yes, here's my credit card. Like that, getting that money feels great. It feels there's a little more, there's more of a high on it than there is when you see your portfolio spike. Like that's a good buzz. I love a port, sport, portfolio spike buzz and they're great. It's one of my favorite buzzes, but it's the buzz you get from building something is exponentially greater. And here's why the buzz you get from building something starts pretty much right when you make a committed choice to build. So before you're even earning anything, like if you just decide, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to build a business that does X and Y. I'm just going to do it. I'm making a choice. I know I love this little area. It could be in crypto, could be in something else. And, uh, I love doing this, you know, whether, you know, whether it's you're a musician or whether you're, uh, a, um, coder or whether you are a, a writer, a copywriter, or whether you are a, enthusiast about fishing, you name it. If you're an enthusiast about fishing and you build a business out of that, you are going to be geeked up no matter what the crypto market does. I, there's, I just know you will because I know this is what happens to me. Um, and there is so much now that you can do with AI that could help you launch that business about fishing. I don't know why I'm using fishing. It's just a, ran a random example that came to me out of thin air. Probably because it's a very unique niche hobby. Um, it's funny, I have a lot of musicians. I have some really great musicians watching this channel. So I was going to use that one. Um, but yeah, fishing. So you literally, I, first I highly recommend if you, if you want to build something, which you should, getting a subscription to chat GPT-4. Uh, I'm not affiliated with GPT, I, I, but this thing has such amazing power of reason compared to chat GPT-3. It can help you build anything. Like you could literally type in, let's see what it says about the phishing example. How do I build a business about bass fishing in rivers? 
Starting a business around bathrooms is an excellent idea, especially if you're passionate about fishing. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to get started. Identify your niche. Bash fishing is quite broad. Narrow down your focus. Are you interested in guided tours, bash fishing equipment, training and tutorials, or maybe a combination of these? Try a unique selling proposition that differentiates you from the existing businesses. Market research. Write a business plan. Now, the thing is, this is not pulling up Google search results and putting it in a user interface. The intelligence here is, is epic. Remember back in the day when we taught computers how to beat humans in chess consistently? Well, what's happening here is this thing, all it's doing is it's playing a game of guess the next best word. And OpenAI has gotten so much data from the internet that this thing is amazing, so amazing at paying guess the next best word that it, it can reason and it has context based. So this really is artificial intelligence. It's not, this isn't like something like this pulled from Google search in case you didn't know. So all these look great. Um, if you wanted to expand, you could say, well, okay, well, I'm good at marketing. So, or I, maybe that's where I'm weak. So tell me about more about number seven. Tell me more about number seven. By the way, I don't bass fish, by the way. I know nothing about it. It seems cool. If I lived by some great rivers, I would probably be into that. I'd probably find a lot of serenity. Where I'm at, you do hiking, ocean stuff, beach volleyball. Then it goes in to tell you this. Now, if you needed to build a website, this thing would tell you how to get a website up in seconds. And then you wanted to write content for it. It would give you ideas on articles and start marketing before you even start building your product. Start building an audience, right? Doing this sort of thing with this sort of assistant for $20 a month, you can do stuff you never dreamed of being able to do before because you no longer have to be an expert at anything. You just need to be a generalist in a niche you're passionate about. And if you're a generalist in a niche you're passionate about, you can build a business of anything you like. Now, obviously, if you like cryptocurrency and you like Flare Networks and you like Songbird, go to town and, and see where you can add value here. And this thing, it might not, this specific interface the specific iteration of chat GPT itself might not know enough about Songbird and Canary Network because this only has data up till September of 2021, but an opportunity right there. If you're there, there, uh, there's a whole, I have so much to talk about with AI. The world's changed. Basically this is early days. This is like when the iPhone came out and all those app developers basically had careers and businesses. This, this is where we're at now with chat GPT four. So the high level item here is build something, build something that gives you a sense of meaning, give some, give something that gives you a sense of purpose. And then you will care less about the crypto market on its down and flat periods, because you are in the zone while you're building your business. And when you're in that creative flow, life is good. You get dopamine hits naturally. And you don't have to wait for those dopamine hits that come from market spikes because we get dopamine hits from market spikes, but we also get dopamine hits from doing a creative task every day that leads us towards a business goal. I know I love dopamine. I'm addicted to it. And you get it from healthy sources like building a business, writing an article, writing a song. I know I get great musicians. Like I said, watching this channel, I seen, I went and saw one play a couple months ago. Uh, hope to catch up with them again soon. There's a sax player in Florida who reached out to me. The guy's amazing at saxophone. It's so fun. I'm, I'm getting a, starting to digress. But use tools like this. Build a business. You'll get dopamine from building this business. You will have the possibility of getting six figures a month from your business. It's crazy what you can do. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. Right now, there's so much opportunity. It's insane. And so, and, and we don't know. Web three might take a, might fake, have a little bit of a winter. There's a lot of friction in web three. And so stuff like AI, it's had its 20 year winter already. This stuff more than that, this stuff was this neural networks and all this AI stuff was actually happening in the sixties. It just had long winters because we didn't have the compute power, but now the compute power is here. This is happening no matter what, whether we like it or not, you can take advantage of this. Crypto is going to happen too, no matter whether we like it or not. But the Web3 adoption we hope for, that still might go slower, slower than we expect. So you're not going to care 
if you build something. So build, I know it'll keep you happy. It kept me happy. During the last XRP, uh, you know, five years, one of the reasons I didn't care and I was able to dollar cost average in on the downtrends and not worry and not be bummed was I, I built a SaaS product with two other business co-founders and we were, you know, it was, this was fun. It helped Amazon sellers and they paid us and the business was growing and, you know, it was a blast. Unfortunately, Amazon caught, didn't like what we were doing. So they shut off our API access and I had to, to uh, basically pivot and do something new. But the point of that is it was super fun. Okay, everybody, I think I've rambled on about this. I'm going to cut it short, even though this, I felt like this went on longer than I wanted, and I'll see you in the next one.